Dr. Corrine Allen, international author, lecturer, researcher, and practitioner in natural health, nutrition, and neurodevelopmental education for over 30 years, is an expert on how to affect brain health, learning, and behavior problems without using drugs. She's a recognized healthcare leader for her natural and practical approach to health regarding natural and alternative methods of stimulating permanent changes in the brain for issues like ADD, autism, Asperger's, dyslexia, learning disabilities, academic and behavioral issues, and acute and chronic brain injuries. She has developed a brain program which facilitates the connection of neurological pathways for brain cells which have been injured, damaged, missing, or not properly working. Dr. Allen's brain research is applied in the Advanced Learning and Development Institute's brain programs. Through the Advanced Learning and Development Brain Camps, Dr. Allen's method of repairing the brain has helped many families find help, solutions, and hope for their brain problems. Now let's join Dr. Corrine Allen as she speaks on Your Brain on Water. And I appreciate all your interest in the brain. How many of you have personal friends or family who have brain issues on any spectrum? That We're not talking about autism good. We, we see it everywhere. We now have one in 75 on the autism spectrum. Uh, research shows that seven out of 10 people are actually have some kind of injury in the brain from birth. And we see statistics that now say one in 10 have brain injury on some level. And I think if anybody is a teacher or a worker in the public school system, you understand and know that we have a very serious problem. And it becomes very, very serious when that problem comes into your own family and into your own home, right? And it's what do we do about it? And what can we do about it within our financial means? Because these things can break the budget. So we're going to give you some exciting things tonight about how you can share this with others and use it more effectively for yourselves. I've been in the natural health field for over 30 years. And I'm going to tell on myself a bit tonight because, you know, a lot of us in the field think we've learned a lot, and we have, and we know a lot, and we do, but we never know enough. And I told people to use the wrong kind of water for a lot of years. And one of, you know, the things that um, when I found good water, the best water, I immediately grabbed onto it because I had been teaching people about pH and acid alkaline and we tried all the products that we could think of to get that to work for them and of course the diets and nothing worked like what we're going to show you tonight. And because we have a brain center where we work with brain injuries and actually do a two week intense program to help the brain to re um, circuit its pathways and do them permanently. Water is a very core part of that issue. So we're just going to talk about the full spectrum of brain issues tonight and how the water, um, the very special water that we're going to talk about tonight is going to help them. Your brain on water. You know that water is the very most important ingredient in your health. How many of you believe that? Now, I believed that 30 years ago, but I didn't practice it. And I didn't have a way to give people the best avenue to get that water into them. It's the one big secret that is being missed. Water is essential to superior health and wellness. And we're particularly concentrating on the brain because that is the part today that is exponentially out of control. Now the composition of water, we have water in the body, we have it in the brain. 80% of your brain is water. How come nobody talks about water in your brain? How come nobody says, take this for your problem? They say, take this pill or take this nutrient, and we forget about water. Our purpose tonight is to show you how the first and the foremost thing that we want to do is we want to do water, but the right kind of water, because folks, we're going to show you that if you do the wrong kind of water, you're really wasting your effort. Now the body is 75% water, and in that you have your um, 
bones, they need water, your kidneys, look how high your kidneys are, 82%. No wonder people get kidney infections and kidney problems because they cannot flush those kidneys if you don't have them filled with 82% water. And your muscles need 75, how many of you get muscle aches and pains and um, there's not enough water flushing the toxins out and then the blood, look at that, 90%. Is it any wonder why people that drink coffee and sodas and very little water get hardening of the arteries and we have such a high amount of people in our population today that are on cholesterol medications and heart disease is the number one killer? It's because 90% of the blood is water. Your brain on water, your brain is the missing link in the health of your brain. It's the essence of life. It has the electromagnetic current that fuels our cells. It's the resonance field. It's all electrical through which the cells communicate. So if you want transfer of DNA, you've got to have the proper water. It's the conduit and the transmission of the vibrational information. The water transports, it stabilizes, it signals, it lubricates, and it structures. It does almost everything. And without it, you can't have brain neurotransmissions that are working properly. How does the body use the water? It uses it to produce hydroelectric energy, especially in the brain. How many of you have ever seen a, a hydroelectric water in the home? I have. I live in Idaho. Lots of people live off the grid there. I've seen an entire ranch set up on hydroelectric. And you don't get electricity if the water isn't flushing and moving and has a charge to it. And that's the same with our brain. Your water has to be flushing and moving. It has to be a lot or you don't get a charge. You can use water to make protein and enzymes function efficiently. It transports nutrients, it transports hormones and other elements, and it keeps your tissues from drying out. How does your body use water? The Mayo Clinic gives us these examples that it moistens in our mouth, our lips. When we have dry lips, dry hair, dry skin, it's all dehydration. It protects the organs and the tissues. When they start to shrivel up, and um, that is part of dehydration. Constipation, diarrhea. It helps dissolve minerals and other things. Minerals get hardened in our brain and start giving us um, sclerosis in our arteries. It regulates our body temperature. It helps lubricate the joints. You've heard people say how they can now do things that they couldn't do before because their joints start being lubricated. It lessens the burdens on the kidney and it carries oxygen to the cells. Other functions of water is that it slows down the cell death. And because we don't see the cell death, we often don't think that we're dying. We're all dying. But we can slow that process down. It lubricates and it cushions. The water flushes out the toxins and poisons. And it helps produce digestive en enzymes. And a lot of us have seen how water, and particularly special ionized microclustered water, can move away the aches and the pains in the body. The brain absolutely desperately needs water to function at its best. And even mild dehydration slows the metabolism down by as much as 3%. And we're going to show you what happens and some of the signs of dehydration. One of the things that um, people don't realize is how does water get lost? In, in my life, I'm, that was not part of my coursework to study to become a natural health practitioner. We never had a course on water. It was like at the end of the sentence, it was drink lots of water. But there was never any teaching on drink the right kind of water and drink water that's electrical, drink water that's a free radical scavenger, drink water that's gonna hydrate. We lose water by sweating. We, when we urinate or have a bowel movement, we lose water. And in a normal day, a person has to drink a significant amount of water to replace that fluid loss that is for normal metabolism. If you happen to drink a cup of coffee a day, or you have a glass of wine, or you have a soda, your need will move up exponentially, and even the basic amount of water will not hydrate you. Causes of dehydration, a very easy cause is you just didn't drink enough water. But what happens is the effects are accumulative. The body uses 2.5 liters, which is about nine cups of water a day, according to the Mayo Clinic. 
Now, folks, the Mayo Clinic is mainline and very, very conservative. That is just what you need, folks, to stay alive. Will you please repeat with me? Nine cups just keeps me alive. Nine cups just keeps me alive. So when you hear these things that say eight glasses of water, nine cups of water, whatever, it isn't even enough, according to the Mayo Clinic, to keep your bodily me metabolism and bodily processes hydrated in the least amount. More causes of cellular dehydration, if you have any kind of work. Now, strenuous activities can be mental or it can be stress. How many of you have stressful jobs? Uh-huh, most people do or have stress somewhere in their life. Uh, maybe I should have had said, how many of you have stressful kids or grandkids? Maybe that's what your trigger is to more answers. Okay, so if you eat foods that are little in fruits and vegetables, they're dried foods. They take a lot of water to digest. And acid, it's like you didn't drink at all because acid consumption of water, and how many of us have been diligent about getting purified water? How many of you out there have been really diligent about making sure you don't drink tap water and you drink bottled? Oh, I was adamant, you know, we have our own in our house, we have distilled, we have everywhere I go, we have purified water. It's acid water, you might as well drink nothing. And digestion of, uh, in the digestion process, the fluids are not being replaced. Thirst is the last thing and you know, I can remember saying to clients, you need to drink more water, and they would say to me, but I'm not thirsty. And I really didn't have a good comeback other than, you need to drink more water. But I sure do now, and you will too. Dehydration occurs when there's more water leaving the body than is being taken in. And the body is dynamic, it's moving all the time and it's always changing and this is especially true with the water levels in the body. How many of you notice now that your body craves water? I've noticed since I've gotten on microclustered water, I can tell my body is like listening now, it's like it's woken up all the receptors and it, it like says, I need more water. And before, I never was thirsty, and I would forget to drink. So your water uh, routinely needs to be replaced. So we lose it in all of these examples, which we're going to now show you. How many of you are not aging? Oh, we got some. Well, I tell you, after I hit about 45, I started to feel it and after I hit 50 I started to feel it more and then the next decade I felt it, felt it more and I am so thankful to God that he brought into my life and into the United States because literally this was not available to us many many years ago that now I have a tool before I'm a hundred to start really challenging my aging process and you see aging causes a decreased thirst. It just goes away. And you see many, many um, older people who say, I'm drinking? And you look, my folks are 93 and 90. They live in a retirement home. Nobody drinks water there. It's like water, water purifiers. It's like foreign. And they're all suffering too. They're not in very good health. Another thing that we sometimes don't want to hear don't want to see is that alcohol causes dehydration. Well, if you're going to drink, then at least be aware you need to drink a whole lot more of the right kind of water to deal with that dehydration it causes. Now, there are special circumstances that cause dehydration, and one of them is burns. And if you know anybody that has lots of burns or little burns, they're going to need a lot more water in their body. Here's another one of those American, um, don't tell me, don't talk to me about it, I'm going to keep my cup of coffee. You know, when I was very, very ill in my 20s, this is what led me into nutrition and natural health, I had to quit coffee because it was um, actually pushing my energy down, and I thank God it did because I realized then what it was not going to help build up my health. And a lot of people just haven't gotten that yet. They haven't figured out that it's reducing your melatonin in your brain. That's very, very important for good, sound sleep. It's decreasing your memory enzymes. 
I want to be full of a good memory on into my 90s and 100s. It can cause DNA damage. It affects your overall brain function. How many students do you know? And I, when I went to college and grad school, everybody was drinking coffee to what? Think, study, stay awake through the night. I couldn't handle it. it thank God at that time I was sick enough that even coffee wasn't helping me. But it, it actually depletes their brain functioning. And when people crave coffee, it's a craving for water that their body needs. 10 ounces of coffee removes 12 ounces of water from the body. Dehydration is caused by diarrhea. Diets cause dehydration when you see people or yourself or whoever when they eat a lot of snacky foods, processed foods, refined grains, chemicals, high in chemicals, preservatives. Sugar is a big one. It steals the water from you and people don't think like that. Now, of course, salty foods cause you to crave and maybe to thirst water, but what do people quench that thirst with or try to quench it with? Sodas or iced tea or something that further causes dehydration. Exercise uses up water. We know that this doesn't include just the physical exercise, but it includes the mental as well. You're going to need way more than the 2.5 liters to fill up that body's dehydration just from some of these things. Fever, we know that edema means dehydration. I've told this to people for years, and you know what? They just, it's so hard for our brains to get it. Well, how can that be a lack of water when I got too much water? Well, it's because the inside of the cell is mostly salt and your potassium sodium pumps aren't working right. And uh, the body pulls the water from other parts to assist that area, and you get dehydration. And if you drink enough water, you must drink it until your urine is clear. Now, the only exception to that is, of course, if you just took a B-complex with the riboflavin in it, and that will make the urine very yellow. Water is the best natural diuretic, and if people would just use a lot more of that, they would find their swelling and things would be much more improved. High altitude causes dehydration. Again, I'm going to tell you a little story about myself. It's kind of, um, when I look at it now, it makes me feel rather stupid and ignorant, but I went to Ecuador a few years ago, and um, I got very sick in Quito. And it was, I thought, what's the matter? I'm not sick. I don't want to get the flu. I felt horrible. And, you know, we had a bottled water here, bottled water there, bottled acid water. <laughs> and, I mean, I was sick. And it, it, was, it was a health trip. There were a lot of other people there who were into health, and nobody knew to drink water. In fact, you know what they gave me? They gave me cacao, which is chocolate, which has caffeine, which further dehydrates you. I didn't know any better. I was so desperate, so I took it. But now, if I go back there or any high elevation, I'm going to know you drink a lot of the right kind of water and really hydrate yourself well. Another reason we all know this one, we've all said it, and we've all known it, is when you're sick, you get dehydrated. And why? Because you've got to flush those toxins. And one of the reasons why we get sick is because we haven't flushed the toxins and also haven't flushed them with the right kind of water. Chronically ill people have to have the right kind of water because if you don't, they just get stuck there and then they cause all kinds of illness. This is a huge area with medications causing dehydration. If you will look in the uh, medicine uh, on the internet or anywhere where they talk about the side effects of drugs, look at what they say for diuretics and antihistamines and blood pressure medication and psychiatric drugs. You will be shocked at the list of symptoms that are all what I'm telling you, vomiting, diarrhea, excessive thirst, swelling, all of these kinds of things that are produced by the drug are because they're producing in you dehydration. And one of my passions is that people who are on psychiatric drugs are getting drained dry in the brain. It's like sucking the water out of the brain because these drugs are just pulling um, the water that is needed for these neurotransmissions to happen. Another one of my passions is the babies that are coming into the world because we now have a plethora of brain injured children and children who can't function. I got an email today from a, a friend who said, oh, thanks so much for um, 
the work you're doing. And she said, it's almost every day that I get a mom coming up to me and they're, they're all saying, what do we do for our kids? They all have brain issues. They all have ADD. They can't think. They can't concentrate. They can't behave. What do we do? And morning sickness is because of severe dehydration. Oh, I would give anything to have known this 30 years ago, 20 years ago when I had my children because I had serious, serious um, morning sickness. I mean, I was sick. And anybody that's a mom that knows that will remember those days. I didn't ever drink water. The thing that saved me is that I took a ton of pills for my pregnancy. And it took me a lot of water to get those pills down. And I'm sure that that's the only reason why my kids are as good as they are. Histamines rise during pregnancy, so you can have, it's absolutely a need for more water. And the amount of hydration that the fetus gets will determine its future in its structure and its function. Did you know that? Now, I want to make something clear to you that I am not giving you the research um, notations under these because you will get them in the book that's forthcoming on your brain on water. And they will all be documented because it will take too much time for us to go through that here. But all of these things that I'm telling you are documented in the research. Overweight. Do you think an overweight person is going to need nine glasses of water a day to just metabolize what their body uses and throws off as waste? How many of you think that that'll be? No. But I would say 99.9% .9 of the overweight people do not drink enough water, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're tending to be overweight. It takes more water for a heavier person to complete their digestive and illuminative processes, and dehydration will slow the metabolic rate down. And also, on the other hand, the right kind of water will speed up the metabolism. Water moves the fat deposits, but I must tell you it must be negative um, ionized water, not positive charged water. In overweight, people get confused with hunger and thirst. Instead of going for water, they go for food, and so that creates more of an imbalance. And ionized water provides the energetic equivalent of food. Now understand what that's saying. Regular water will not do this, but if you are trying to lose weight and you take the ionized water, it will actually provide energy. It's like a source of food to your cells so that you have energy and your body can burn the fat. Sun exposure causes dehydration. The sun, when you're there, you know how dehydrated we get. And what do people do when they're in the sun and for several hours after? They go get carbonated, caffeinated, alcoholic sugar drinks. And every single one of those creates more dehydration. Of course, sweating creates more dehydration. My son is a great um, guy that works out. It's a water you can drink while you're working out. And you don't get that slush in your stomach and you don't feel a, an upset stomach from it. Stress causes dehydration. I look at the hours I used to work. I still work them, but I used to work them without drinking water. Now I have large glasses of water beside me all day long. And I would think, oh, I'll drink later. Oh, I know I need to drink. And my day would just go push, 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 push all day long. And I didn't do my body too good of good. And, you know, I've had to undo some of those things. But again, it was like I wasn't making the connections. And I believe I wasn't making the connections because I was so dehydrated, my brain couldn't put it together. And I didn't have anybody come and tell me that there really was a water. I had lots of people come with alkaline water and these machines out there. And I've been checking them out for 20 years. And I said, these don't work. They're not doing one thing for you. Why should I spend a thousand, two thousand? Why should I spend anything on them? I don't want to give my clients this kind of water. So I knew because I was always testing them that what I was seeing on the market really wasn't working. Um, stress will use up hormones. It will use up neurotransmitters, making them work harder. It will use up your vital resources, and you have to have water to keep them functioning. Now, we all know that too much salt isn't good. And using the wrong kind of salt is bad for your body because it will grab water and dehydrate you. 
but using too much salt, especially on salty foods, because that's the wrong kind of salt, folks. They don't put sea salt on those things. We're going to tell you in a few minutes the right kind of salt to use and how to use salt to help your hydration. Of course, vomiting can cause dehydration. So when you see those um, information on any drugs or anywhere where it says causes vomiting, you know that it's possible it can cause dehydration. What are the dangers of dehydration? Well, if you're dehydrated as much as 5%, it can reduce in as much as 20 to 30 percent drop or make your physical activity go down. How many of you notice a drop in your energy when you're dehydrated? How many of you notice that when you take the right kind of water, ionized, microclustered water, you have an increase in energy? I mean, it's phenomenal what that can do. And if you take any supplements at all, it pushes them to the height of what they can do. So I can go 16-hour days now with no breaks and just 10% uh, reduction in your water can make you sick. 20% can even mean death. Isn't that amazing? Only 20% you can die. 1% to 2%, that's very, very little, folks in your brain can mean that you have problems concentrating and thinking. How many of you know somebody, I wouldn't ask you if you had that problem, but how many of you know somebody that has that problem? I think we all do, and at times we all do. Dehydration is a cumulative, it comes together. You see, the average person drinks 160,000 gallons of water in a lifetime, and 75% of the citizens around the world in developed countries are chronically dehydrated. I would have never believed that before my experience with water personally and what I've seen with my clients and our brain um, participants in our brain center. It's absolutely true. People are so dehydrated. One third of the Americans have such a weak thirst sensation that they mistake it for hunger. And look at the obesity that we have. Look at how many of us, we don't like it, struggle with weight. And it's one of the number one reasons is water. If 80% of your brain is water, which runs your pituitary, your hypothalamus, which regulates your weight, and if your body is 70, 75% water, and that is related to your hunger drives and your thirst. We know that water is a huge part of why we are not getting the weight that we want. Brain dehydration. It brings on feelings, if we're dehydrated, of anxiety and depression. The brain doesn't function properly. It uses up amino acids that are called our happy aminos that have to be working. The worse the dehydration is, the worse the depression and anxiety are. I wish, I wish, I wish I could go back to my clients who had such severe depression that they chose to go to uh, psychiatric drugs. I wish, and, and nutrients weren't doing it, folks, and maybe you know people like that. Diet, they were doing all the right things, and they still couldn't get past that, de that depression. And there are people that you're going to run into. And the reason is because they don't have the electromagnetic energy moved by the fluids in their brain through the right kind of water to get that depression to be able to do what it's supposed to do, go away. And anxiety is at a height in our world today. ATP is needed for the cellular energy. It's greatly reduced and there's no energy. And the poor brain just can't function. How many of you have had, oh, I just can't think today. I just, I can't get it right. You ever gone into a room to get something? Oh. What did I come in here for? We've all done it. And the only thing is it gets worse after you get 50 and 60 and 70, doesn't it? <laughs> and so that's your trigger. Boy, I'm not drinking enough. i got to get back and get my water, but get the right kind of water. What are the side effects of brain dehydration? One of the side effects is your body starts to use up the antioxidants because of its great need to get rid of body toxins. What is one of the biggest things on the market today? Antioxidants. It's a millions of dollars are being spent on antioxidants because they're being used up because of a lack of water. 
brain aminos are used up to make up for this lack of water. Tryptophan and tyrosine are amino acids that are mood stabilizers. Their deficiency makes us feel anxious and depressed. Dehydration and mental functioning. Folks, part of my passion is to help you, to give you a tool to get to teachers, to get into schools, to get into our public facilities where our children are being, um, you know, they're being labeled, they're being given um, drugs because they cannot have a good memory, they have a fuzzy memory, they can't remember math, and they can't focus. It's loaded in the schools today. And if they had the proper water, this would probably dissipate very quickly. Dehydration lowers the psychomotor processing speed, the memory, the concentration, and fatigue. How many kids and families do you know they come home and they have no energy left? They can't do anything. They want to sleep till noon on the weekends. They, they can't think through their school to get it done quickly. It's epidemic, folks. It affects their cognitive ability. It impacts their physical performance and their motor skills. So you are the tool. You are the conduit. You are the caucus to be able to go out and spread the word and use this information to share with people, to get into private schools, to get into church schools, where they can start giving it to their students and they can see the teachers won't be screaming at the parents to put their kids on those awful drugs. Brain issues related to dehydration. Does this look like a very hydrated brain to you? It doesn't to me. This is a real picture of a brain, and it's got a problem. Alzheimer's and dehydration, I have known for years in my practice, that has been research proven. Remember, what I'm telling you here is not my opinion. These are documented facts in research that Alzheimer's and all these other things that I'm going to relate to you are coming from documented studies that dehydration plays a significant part in it. Alzheimer's tends toward vasopressin levels, which is the, responsible for the water being in the right balance. Alzheimer's have increased dehydration. And one of the hardest things that I've seen in my clients that have had Alzheimer's parents or relatives, they can't get them to drink. Once they're past a certain level, it's very, very hard to get them to ingest the water. So what I say is if you can only get a little bit of water in people, for heaven's sakes, get the right kind of water in the people so that it's hydrating water. Anxiety and panic attacks, they are rampant. People are paralyzed with panic attacks and anxiety. And what happens? They don't have water. They've got their cup of coffee next to them on the road. They've got their coffee in the morning or they've got their soda at work. Sweating and, and nauseous, shortness of breath, dizziness, lightheadedness, unsteady and fearful. These are all signs of dehydration and, what, and anxiety and panic attacks. This is something that when families deal with anorexia and bulimia, if they would know how important hydration is, they could probably save a lot of money and a lot of stress. I've dealt with families with this problem. How many of you have ever known anybody with this problem? It's very serious and it's very life-threatening. And they have severe dieting issues. They have little or no intake of fluids. They starve themselves. They binge. They vomit. They lose their appetite. They have anxiety, sleep disturbance, fatigue, lack of well-being, depression, irritation. All of those are brain problems. All of those are brain dehydration. Comas. I'm dealing with several people right now in comas. And I found every single one of them is like 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 percent hydrated in their brain. They're, they're barely hanging on, and they've been in these comas by God's grace for a long time. And if they would only get them on the water, so far these families haven't been too able to do that, but they can move them because the water is the electrical force that will wake up the brain and help them to be able to function and, and get things moving. It can, comas 
See, the, the brain and the body shuts down. And when the body is so dehydrated, well, we think because they had a brain accident and they got it hit on the head that, the, you know, that they can't come out of that coma because of that. Folks, I'm telling you, they can't come out because their body doesn't have enough energy in the brain or in the body to do the connections to get it to wake up. In an advanced terminal cases, dehydration is a very important factor. And hydration is a key factor in coma and delirium. It's very important that you use microclustered, ionized, alkaline water to quickly and efficiently hydrate the brain. Bipolar. It's a very serious issue. Some people have it very, very bad. It causes anxiety, depression, rapid mood changes, compulsions, loss of energy and irritation. And again, it's related in scientific studies to dehydration. Depression. Now, I've told you some about this already, but it's a huge thing. I think that we would see a major turnaround. It's one of the number one drugs that's given out is kind of drugs for, de for depression. When the brain is chronically dehydrated, all the functions suffer. The brain needs tryptophan, an amino acid, to make the serotonin. You've heard of the drugs that create serotonin and help that to balance. It really doesn't balance them, it makes them more dehydrated, which then makes melatonin, which helps them sleep and get rest so they can function in their day. The amount of serotonin made is dependent upon adequate what? water in the brain and the right kind of water. Moods. How many of you ever had moody kids? I had a moody husband and an angry husband and he would not be upset with me telling you this because we fixed him <laughs> and he's thrilled to be fixed. <laughs> But um, he was a forceps baby, so he had some brain injury. And folks, by the way, all of these issues where they have more of a tendency when they get dehydrated, because not all of us, when we get dehydrated, go bipolar or go anorexic or go into depression. I believe there's plenty of evidence in the research to show us that they have an incident, shock or trauma or some kind of an event that has caused an injury in the brain. And in my husband's case, this was his forceps birth. So we put him through our um, brain programs and helped the circuits to reconnect. Uh, and you know he was doing so much better. But since he's been in water, he has seen even more improvement and more help. But there's one little time when we're driving long trips. And what is it with men that they don't like to drink? They got the easiest job in the world to stop anywhere and, you know. And women don't have that privilege in life. Well, my husband won't drink very much, you know, on the road, and I'm guzzling and stopping all the way along. And he'll get real fussy when we're on trips. And I just say, you just dehydrated, honey. And he is. So it's associated with negative mood. When you see yourself getting grouchy and you know others around you, it's because they are dehydrated. Multiple sclerosis, a big problem. It's very sad to see this. You can get well from multiple sclerosis, but it means many scars. And one of the causes of exacerbations is dehydration. Not drinking enough water, drinking other beverages that are like caffeine, caffeinated beverages, soft drinks, alcohol. I know a number of people that have MS that have gotten over it as I've worked with them in my practice because they really went on a strict diet and did a lot of things, but others have not because they refuse to drink and they continue to drink their sodas and their dehydrating beverages. And dehydration doesn't necessarily cause it, but it makes it w much worse. Here's one that everywhere I go, I have people tell me, oh, and yeah, my, 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 this relative, friend, acquaintance has schizophrenia. We don't hear about this because a lot of, nobody's going to come up to you and say, ah, I have schizophrenia. But schizophrenia is very much related to dehydration and the risk, high risk of dehydration further from the psychiatric medications that they're on. And they show depression, they show delusions, hallucinations, remember coma and being delirious, lack of water, no energy, again, brain doesn't work right, confusion, stupor, comatose-like, and suicidal. 
Um, suicide among our teenagers is very high. I am of the personal belief most of our teenagers that I work with, and I was a counselor in the alternative, the kids that couldn't make it in the regular school, they were the, the special kids. So I worked with them for many years. And they never drank water. Of course, I didn't either. But they had more problems, more traumas, more things that were pushing it. And a lot of these kids get suicidal. Seizures and dehydration. One of the most incredible things that I have witnessed in our brain camps is that the kids that come, they come, some of them, not all, several um, in spectrums on the autistic spectrum or others, they have seizures. They're on heavy medication. Some of them have shunts or things put into their brain to control the seizures. They get there and they don't have any more seizures. And I'm going, hmm, I think there must be a connection here. We're putting them on a lot of water and um, they choose to work with their own doctors to get off the meds and we're seeing maybe one seizure the whole two weeks is pretty much what we see when they've been having them every day. Pretty amazing when you see that and pretty much documented by research that says dehydration is a trigger for a seizure and it can lead to coma and death and ticks is a disorder that can be related to dehydration. Now, how many for Tourette's and these kind of things ever say it's dehydration? But folks, this is a common, not very common, but it's common enough amongst some in the population, and it's not a very fun thing for people to have. And the research says dehydration is a factor and a very big factor. Strokes and heart attacks related to dehydration. You've heard of people being out on the basketball court and you know they're sweating and they're working hard and they go off the court and they drop over dead. You heard of that? We've all heard of that. It's dehydration. They were probably drinking something, you know, of those uh, special drinks that they, you know, that the people in called gators drink, you know. Um, <laughs> And when we don't have enough water, remember our blood needs 80% water. It's a flowing river through us. It builds cholesterol, which causes strokes and causes clogged arteries. And when we take the drugs for that, we get further dehydrated. And when there's insufficient water washing in and washing out, we, the, the membranes seal off. Um, so further water is lost. And when the dehydration blood, the blood gets thicker. Why do people have bypass surgeries? Why do people have events of heart attacks? Because they're dehydrated. What a simple solution, guys. And it's so economical. Do you think that $4,000 is cheaper in getting a water machine that will wash you and wash your arteries than going in for bypass surgery and losing work? for six months to a year. I mean, come on. Put your priorities in the right place and start thinking about what is it and where are we putting our priorities. When we think about, when my husband and I were introduced to this kind of water, we said, that's a no-brainer. We're spending all this money on supplements and, and all these things to get younger and to do the work that God's given us to do. It doesn't make sense for us not to have the best water on the planet. And so cholesterol is a production in a defense. It's God's way of protecting us from dehydration. Swelling of the brain and dehydration. If you lose more sodium than fluid, you will swell. The body compensates for this loss by producing particles that pull the water into the cells. This produces edema and swelling. And when this happens in the brain, there is severe grave consequences. And folks, you and whoever gets this information from you, this information may save a life. Because when somebody has a car accident or an injury to the head, the number one thing that can cause more brain injury is the swelling. And if you cannot stop that swelling, you will have so much more brain injury and in many cases death. So remember that little piece here. There are little life nuggets here that can save many lives if you pick them up. Brain dehydration, histamines, and brain allergies. Who 
ever thought that allergies were related to dehydration? Oh my goodness, when I was 16, I started this thing called allergies, and so my parents took me down to the doctor and I got all these tests, those miserable tests, and then I had to for years get these crazy shots of these antigens, and I thought, these aren't doing anything, I still have allergies. And, you know, I started moving into nutrition and that helped, changing my diet, and I think just getting more fruits and vegetables, getting the water from that, getting more minerals. And I eventually got rid of the allergies, but what I could have saved myself in money and time and lost um, things in life. I had headaches for probably seven years every day of my life. It was allergies, it was toxicity. I never drank water. I didn't even drink regular acid water. I didn't drink anything because I was not educated. And we need to be educated and to educate others about how important Brain allergies are a very key factor for people. In fact, a very high number of people have allergens that get into the system and because they don't have enough water, they affect you in having anger, anxiety, behavior disorders, compulsions and ritualistic behaviors, confusion, concentration problems, depression, mood disorders, nervousness, schizophrenia, and speech disorders. A lot of times we don't even relate these. They are allergies. When the histamine is too high, your allergies are raging, and they are related to the brain. High histamines are, what's the thing on the market? Antihistamines. Because they know you've got to bring that histamine level down or you're going to be miserable if you have a brain allergy or if you have a body allergy. It's an indication of dehydration. Chronic dehydration can cause histamine to become excessively active. Supplying the body with water, and again, the right water, will cause a disappearance of the high levels of histamine. And water, now folks, this is science. This is studied. Science has told us that water, even regular water, will reduce histamine amounts. But think of how much exponentially you can raise the bar if you have microclustered ionic alkaline water because it inhibits the histamines even more and their production and acts like an antihistamine. It's fantastic. Science has documented a lot of things for the brain and histamines is one of the things they know. They've done the studies. Brain issues are linked to the histamine levels being way too high. Abnormal fears, aggressiveness, autism, bipolar, compulsive behavior, compulsivity, and Rituals, crying easily, depression, hyperactivity, obsession about sex, overstimulation, racing brains, schizophrenia, suicide thoughts, and others. See how many of these are coming at us from different levels. Many of these things you've heard just a few minutes ago about dehydration. Now you're hearing it about histamines, that they have high histamine levels being caused by the dehydration. Signs of high histamines are caused by brain allergies, agitation, aggressive behavior, anxiety, autism, depression, fatigue, irritability, learning problems, moodiness, psychotic issues, slow thought processes. And do you know that most common in the world of allergens is dairy and gluten? One of the things we do in our brain camp is we do a gluten-free, dairy-free diet, teach people how to do wonderful recipes without gluten and without dairy because you, they are such high triggers for the brain to go into some of these things. Water is a natural antihistamine. Research shows that water is known to reduce histamines. One of the greatest researchers, and I recommend you Google him and look up his works because he has a lot of great books on water. He's done fabulous research and is responsible for giving us a lot of good information about what water does. Batman Helge is an MD and he says that water inhibits histamine production as well as its excess release. And he's the one that found in his research that water by itself had the strong antihistamine properties. Allergies are in epidemic proportions. I used to think in my practice, every single person that came in, now granted they came in because they were sick and they had issues, I wasn't dealing with a healthy population, 
but that everybody had allergies. But research says that two in every 10 now suffer from allergies. And the young are developing nervous system problems um, and they are, their nervous systems are particularly vulnerable to any allergic or toxic overloads. Allergies lead to behavioral disorders such as hyperactivity, learning disabilities, etc. At least one in 10 ch child may react adversely to some common foods or additives. Dehydration produces more histamines. Histamines are produced exponentially when the body becomes more and more dehydrated. Your brain's health depends upon three main factors, and I want you to memorize these. Write them down. You gotta drink water. You gotta drink enough water and you gotta drink the right kind of water. So when we say drink water, right now we need to be saying, you need to be drinking water that hydrates the body, and what is that water that hydrates the body and the brain? Microclustered ionized alkaline water. Water recommendations, and these are only guidelines because I find that I need sometimes a lot more water than this. The minimum intake for children and adults is one half your weight in ounces. Think about this, folks. How many of our school children even drink two glasses of water a day? Very few. And parents say, well, here's your Coke, here's your milk, here's your, um, you know, your health drink, whatever those are on the market today. Here, you need some energy, take this. And they're making them more dehydrated. The body needs no less than two quarts of water and a half a teaspoon of sea salt every day to compensate for its natural losses in urine, respiration, and perspiration. Remember that the inside of the cell is water with salt in it. It's not just water. So I noticed I was on a weight loss diet recently, lost 10 pounds in a week, and water was a big part of it. And it was exciting. And I would take a teaspoon of salt and just, I love salt, so it wasn't hard. But um, it helped me. I mean, it was pushing it out. So it was kind of exciting. And I could see my body was needing more than a gallon a day to flush all the toxins that were moving. To really hydrate the system, you can drink equal to your weight in ounces. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you can drink 150 ounces. Not 150 pounds, folks. Sodas. How many of you are hooked on sodas? No, in the past we're hooked on sodas. Yeah. And you know, did you know it? No. Nobody ever taught you that. Like, they taste good. And you know, I need a refreshment and I just ran or I just had a stressful day. Oh, give me a drink. Or what do we do for people to be um, kind of hospitable? We give them drinks, right? And we have a whole assortment of things that are all dehydrating and all acid. If you substitute milk, juice, sodas, tea, coffee, alcohol, you have to drink even more alkaline water. You have to drink 12 ounces of water just to replace, remember that 10 ounces of coffee. It takes 32 ounces of alkaline water at 9.0 pH to neutralize one eight ounce soda. Is that amazing? And you can experiment with it and see. Start pouring in and see how many glasses of alkaline water it takes to bring that pH up to alkaline. It takes 32. Water is, dehydration is caused by water not absorbing well. Water has to be microclustered, ionized, and alkaline to have the proper hydration to cells. And again, to the, to the average person, it's like, I don't even know what dehydration is. Well, now you can give them this information and let them see. They're going to all identify. How many of you have identified with some of these symptoms we've talked about tonight? And so the average person is going to get it. They're going to know, oh, I am dehydrated. I do need water. And I have not been educated about water. The average person, even in health, folks, even your practitioners in the natural health have not been educated about water because we haven't had the right kind of water readily available, but we do now. RO, distilled, purified, bottled acid waters, they're, they're all going to 
dehydrate and take water out of the body. So what do we drink? We drink only microclustered, ionized, alkaline water made with medical grade. Folks, I cannot emphasize enough how important this is. I cannot tell you the horrible cases that I've seen. I've seen people grow things like tumors on their um, body within two months of having machines that are ionizers that were half the price and were already putting toxic metals into their body and when they stopped the water the, the growth went away and the metals they were getting and the toxins so it is absolutely critical and just having solid plates isn't enough you've got to protect those metals and only medical grade platinum and titanium are safe for your body so they don't break down and you don't see that, folks, and most people don't know how to test it. So just drinking the water, you're not going to taste it. Be begin drinking as soon as you wake up in the morning, 16 ounces of water. You want to drink all day long, every hour. Drink enough so that you get clear urine. One of the complaints is i got to run to the bathroom all day long. You know what I found out? that once your body gets rid of a lot of that toxins, you don't have to run so much anymore. So be blessed and thank God that you do have to run because you're moving toxins when you have to go frequently. And it will pass. And if you live in high altitude, you've got to drink more water. And if you eat any convenience food, you have to drink more water because it sucks up the water. And if you exercise, if you walk up a hill, if you walk up the stairs, if you go downstairs and do the laundry, whatever, you're exercising some, you're using up more water. If you have a lot of stress, stress causes more dehydration and your metabolism is using up that water. Our next um, subject is about salt. Salt is, um, you should only use sea salt because salt expands the blood so it can reach all parts of the body and it helps to stabilize the blood pressure and I take my clients who have high blood pressure and say you know you must have some salt in your diet and definitely get on the right kind of water it helps you sleep better and it helps reduce mucus inadequate intake of water causes dehydration but it's not just the inadequate intake. Drinking enough water is only one of the elements in rehydrating the brain and the body. You have to also have the right kind of water. It has to be microclustered. It has to be ionized. It has to be alkaline. It has to be made from solid medical grade plates and it may or you may not absorb enough water. I can't tell you how many people have said, and they've even gone into their doctor and said, I'm drinking a gallon a day and I'm still dehydrated. And folks are getting the message out there and people are starting to hear and listen and say, well, I, I'm not hydrated. Oh, so I'll just go get any alkalizer, any ionizer. Folks, don't do that. I promise you that as a professional and as someone that can tell the difference, you've got um, a big difference. And when, you know, it's like you do pay for quality. You know that about your cars, you know that about your houses, you know that about um, your lives in other ways. Why don't we get it about our water? And hopefully you will get that and be able to help your friends get that. Water that is acid is dehydrating and I almost feel like I have to go do some kind of penance to my clients who I've told them to drink RO water to drink distilled water because I was actually doing them not any good other than giving them water that didn't have all the chemicals in it I was giving them positively charged acid water and then we were having to give them products that had to move the pH and they were having to do more and more raw foods because they couldn't get their pHs to stay alkaline because they were drinking all the wrong kinds of waters. Water that is acid is dehydrating. One of the greatest things you can do with people is go up to them and say, hey, you drinking that water? How long have you been interested in good water? 
And people that are drinking bottled water care about their water, right? They already are aware that they need to be drinking water and that it's important for them. Water, folks, is not just water. Would you ever drink this water coming out of your left-hand side here? No. Would you drink it coming out of the right, the falls? Yeah, you wouldn't probably have any problem at all with that. Water is not just water. It has a structure. And the structure is very different in water that comes out of polluted areas or tap water or RO water. Ionized water has an ability to change the structure of the water. And your water has its own brain. Even the purest water can still contain vibrational pollution. Even pure bottled water, even pure RO water has a vibrational pollution of acid. Water's the most programmable substance on the earth. It has a memory. It'll actually contain the energetic signatures of whatever is placed in it. And it stores and transfers this information within the body. This is why we can now replicate that water that is like the hexagonal water coming out of the high mountain areas in the Hunza area and in other areas that are mountain areas known for longevity. We can now duplicate that in your own home and have longevity coming out of your own tap. And bottled RO distilled is not the best. It will not hydrate the body. There's a couple things. We have structure of water. The water is a pentagonal structure. That's large, big clumps. And it's very hard to move them into the cell because the cell has very small, permeable walls. And it's not shown in any way to improve life other than keeping you alive. It accelerates your aging and it's high in acid waste that build up. The metabolic functions actually decrease and there's little capacity for that water to store any energy. It has little energy to give. You, how many of you get energy from drinking tap water or RO water? Uh -uh. Do you get energy from drinking microclustered, hexagonal, ionized water? Yes, amen, do you? A lot of energy because it holds energy. Little penetration of the nutrients into the cells. I can take half of the vitamins and minerals I used to take. How many of you have the same thing now that I drink hydrated microclustered water because it gets into the cells? Nutrient absorption is more efficient and there's an inefficient absorption or um, getting rid of waste with the pentagonal water. Now the hexagonal structure of water is small clumps. It's easy to get into the cell. They improve life significantly. They slow down the aging. There's no acid waste buildup. The metabolic functions increase. I've actually noticed that when I drink this water, I tend to have a low thyroid, but when I drink the water, my thyroid starts working a whole lot better. Huge capacity of this hexagonal water to store energy. And it needs those folks, those very strong, solid medical grade plates to be able to make that kind of water for a lifetime. If you don't have that, you cannot keep producing that year in and year out. It is highly energizing to the cells. It gives rapid penetration into the cells of nutrients. It helps their absorption and it helps efficiently remove the waste. It contains powerful antioxidants. We call this microclustered hexagonal ionized water. And it has the negative hydrogen ion called the hydroxyl ion. Its water becomes alkaline, which helps our bodies move to the pH side of alkaline. It's super hydrating. You can run a, a very strong race. I can do a very strong workout where I'm jumping and moving and very much doing cardio and in the middle of it drink a whole glass of water and it doesn't stop me at all. Whereas I could never do that in the past. I had to do it before or after exercise. And it's, the ionized water is six times more hydrating than conventional water. Microclustered hexagonal ionic water scavenges free radicals. It breaks down the cells. The free radicals steal the molecules from the health tissue, healthy tissue. They create unstable or mutated cells. How do you think we get cancer, folks? Those are unhealthy mutated cells. And free radicals are responsible for all disease. People come up to me and say, well, does it help this? Does it help this? Does it help this? 
Is it a degenerative disease? Meaning, did it happen by an accident? Did they get a hit on the head and it happened one day, it was there, and the next, the day before it wasn't there, and the next day it was there? That's not a degenerative disease. A degenerative disease comes on slowly. And almost all the problems that we have today, of which we have myriads of names for, are degenerative and the water is what is responsible, number one, for moving those free radicals out of the body which are causing those things. Only the large solid plates hold the energy structure in the water to get into the cells. I had somebody tell me how they did an actual research study. They bought four or five of these other machines that have slotted plates, have mesh plates, and even some other kinds of plates, but they were not the high-grade medical solid plates. True to the research on hexagonal water, that if it's true hexagonal water, and if it's done properly with the proper electricity, the proper amount of square inches, enough on the plates to get the water split, it will hold, and that water held every single time, way more than every single one of these other types of machines. And you can see the difference in the sizes. So the structure is important, and if it doesn't hold that structure long enough to get in your body or to stay in your body until it finishes its work, folks, it doesn't matter what it registers on the meter. If it can't hold it longer than more than a few hours and many hours, it's worthless. Microclustered hexagonal water and calcium. A lot of people know that calcium is very, very, very important. And the water actually helps you get your calcium and keep it in your cells. Hexagonal water will help you retain calcium. We start to lose calcium a lot under stress and under um, just life and exercise and just moving through the day. Mental and physical signs of calcium deficiency, they're rampant. Nervous tension, inability to relax, can't sleep at night, fatigue, not in proportion to the amount of work you do, restlessness, irritability, quick-tempered insomnia, spastic colon, tooth decay, bone loss, um, mental depression, muscle spasms, PNS, PMS, menstrual cramps, and menopausal symptoms, all calcium deficiency. So you're losing calcium, you're either not getting enough, but when you start on the proper water, it starts to stay in your body and you actually produce uh, a better use of your calcium. Free radicals, you can see two molecules here and the one stealing from the other because it's positively charged and it goes after the negative. It oxidizes and breaks down cells. The brain can't perform well when there's too many free radicals. Nearly all diseases, and we're talking about brain diseases as well as body diseases that are linked to free radicals. They are actually produced from childhood and I think that what we're seeing today is children very young are producing these free radicals because they are having at very young ages in our 20s and 30s, not children anymore, but they developed these year be years before because they're high free radical production very early in life. Aging increases the production of free radicals. And we cannot keep up with this excess. There's no way. How many of us are actually getting younger every year? We're trying, but it's a battle, isn't it? And we're, some of us are gonna, <laughs> gonna make it, but it's a constant battle to get past those free radicals because we're getting hit with them everywhere. Feed the brain the most important antioxidant, it's water. Water is used as an antioxidant, is more efficient and more economical than pills or juices. You can do the math. If you spend um, $100, $200, $300 a month, which is not unreasonable, a lot of people are doing this for antioxidants, either in the form of juice or pills a month. You multiply that times 10, times 12, you've got easily $4,000 a year. And it's gone. And you only got it for you. Think about the economy of having one product that you can spend $4,000 on and it can feed the neighborhood free radical scavenging nutrients. It's pretty much a no-brainer. It eradicates free radicals. 
The water can flood the brain all day long with free radical scavengers. And see, it's not enough. I take free radical scavengers. It wasn't enough. If I didn't have the water, it, it wasn't doing enough good. It's, you've got to have what nature determined to be the first priority, and that's the proper kind of water. We want to retard the aging and renew the brain at the cellular level. Free radical and brain problems. These are all, again, scientifically documented that free radicals are an important part of the problem in aging brains. ALS, in Alzheimer's, in anxiety, in autism, bipolar, brain edema, brain infections, brain allergies, depression, hyperactivity, obsessive compulsive, Parkinson's, schizophrenia, seizures, sleep apnea, stress, strokes, and toxic mental accumulation and traumatic brain injury. All of this is documented by scientific studies that says these are related to an excess of free radical formation in the body, in the brain. Acidosis being a cause of disease. The body produces highly acidic wastes from the foods it produces and from the food you eat, I should say. Acidosis is one of the main contributors leading to aging and various illnesses. Acid waste, if you don't excrete them, what do they do? They circle around and around and around. They end up being aches and pains. They end up being a loss of function, a loss of your brain. It can accumulate in your arteries, blood vessels, clog them up. You can get stones. You can get anything and everything from these acid wastes. And they accumulate in cells that are deprived of oxygen and nutrients. Look on the left-hand side and you'll see the things that cause acidosis in terms of food. And anything basically that is not a fruit or vegetable is an easy way to remember they're acid forming. And how many people have an 80-20% diet? Folks, that's 80% foods that are fruits and vegetables and 20% that are grains and other foods. Not too many people do that because it's hard to eat that way and not too many people are that dedicated. So acidosis builds up from the foods that you eat. Acidosis induces, now again, science has shown that it induces brain damage, that acidosis can actually cause neuron death and it causes a reduction in the glutathione production, which is the most powerful antioxidant that your liver produces on its own when given the right stimulus and nutrients. The pH potential of hydrogen measurement in the cells. You have your alkaline pH and you have your acid pH. The negative ions are on the alkaline side. You assist detoxification when you have alkalinity. And the body, when it's alkaline, it can absorb calcium and magnesium and um, sodium and potassium. The body is amply supplied with minerals. You're not always going to be deficient. And it's abundant in oxygen. When you have an acid, uh, you have abundant energy. Then you have positive ions if you're on the acid side. They cause auto-intoxication. That means you poison yourself. And the body can't absorb the minerals. I've had people who say, but I take all these minerals. They're spending hundreds of dollars on minerals and they're not absorbing any because they're acid. And body uses up these key minerals in trying to neutralize acids. There's a lack of oxygen and there's little or no energy. How many people know that the number one complaint is no energy? And when a product comes out, that can give you more energy, people go for it, don't they? And what a simple thing to have pouring out of your tap in your own home that can produce a life flow of energy, not just for you, but for your whole family and your whole neighborhood. ALS and acidosis. There's a Dr. Gansel who's done um, a good study and, and works with ALS. And he's um, reported in the Townsend Newsletter that he believes ALS is caused by severe acidosis. This is a very um, damaging neurological disease and most people don't live with it. Recommends the use of, look at this, water that sends low voltage electrical impulses into the water. 
Now the next one is autism. Autism, a lot of you have asked me about, it's rampant. The U.S. military claims now we have one in, one in 75 are on the autism spectrum. A few years ago it was one in 50. It keeps going down the wrong direction. Symptoms of autism, according to research, are linked to acidosis. High amounts of acids are found in the blood of autistics. And the mitochondria damage in the autistics is linked to the acidosis. Bipolar is linked to acidosis. Children's problems, acidosis. If they're shy, it's been research found, fatigue, impaired concentration, unwillingness to eat, perverted appetite. I had kids like that, one in particular. They're tough to deal with. Acidosis, and you know what? They don't like to drink. A lot of these kids that have these problems, they don't want to drink. And they want their foods that they want, and mostly they're not fruits and vegetables that they want. They can be restless and poor sucking. These are acidosis symptoms in children. Then you have schizophrenia can be related to acidosis. Dr. Steinfeld says the key problem in schizophrenia is acidosis, and his work verifies that it is a biological problem. <clears throat> Seizures and acidosis. We talked a little bit about this before in terms of dehydration, but research also says it's due to acidosis. And an acid pH can actually trigger the seizure that can then lead to brain damage. Stress and acidosis. If you're stressed out, mental stress causes acidosis. Auto intoxication, when you are poisoning yourself because you didn't drink enough water to get the poisons out, your bowels aren't moving, you're not urinating enough, stresses the body, makes you acid. It increases your cortisol production. When you increase your cortisol production, you want it low. It causes you to gain weight in places you don't want it. Acid is increased in diabetics. In every single diabetic, they have an acid problem. And there are absolute miracles when you look at this work that has been done with this microclustered ionized alkaline water in the hospitals in Japan. You have seen pictures, video documentation of diabetics who have been absolutely turned around using this water. It's absolutely fantastic for any blood sugar issues because it helps get rid of the acidosis. It doesn't do anything to cure a disease. It gets rid of the causes and lets your body do the work. Acidosis in a traumatic brain event. If you are eating junk food and not drinking water properly, the right kind of water, and you happen to have an accident, a car accident, or hit on the head, you can have a pH level in the brain that's already acid. When that event occurs and there is a shortage of oxygen or a traumatic event, restriction in the blood or whether it's a stroke or a heart attack or an accident, the damage is actually made worse and the damage is increased in the brain. Here are other issues that acidosis is related to in the research. It's related to Alzheimer's, their acid, alcoholism, comas, Down syndrome, nightmares, and multiple personality and Parkinson's. Alkaline water solution. We have a solution. It is so exciting for me to be able to share with people a solution because we have an epidemic of brain problems. Would you agree? How many times have we said, what is wrong with them? Yeah, and you know, it might be us, but you know, we think and we see that there's a lot of issues with people's brains. They're not thinking right, they're not reasoning right, they're not functioning. We have an easy solution, it's effective, it's economical, it increases your oxygen. We know that oxygen is important. How many of you know that cardiovascular exercise will increase your oxygen? How many of you do it every day? Good, some of you, but we don't do it enough, do we? And how about if you could oxygenate your brain every hour of the day by just drinking a glass of water? Is that amazing or what? Nothing else like it. 
It moves acids waste efficiently and the most efficient and it neutralizes the acid in the cells. Use common sense, folks. Don't assume that water is going to cure anything. The body will heal itself when it's given the proper nutrients. And folks, water is a nutrient. Talk to people like this. Water is the number one thing that we are missing in all of our health programs. And that's the number one nutrient. It's a nutrient. It's not a cure. It's not a pill. It's not a prescription. It's a God-given nutrient, and it's the number one nutrient. And the wonderful thing is that we can share it at such an inexpensive cost, literally. You know how much medical things cost? Have you ever had a medical event? You can put out how much? $4,000 in about five minutes? Anybody had that experience? I've had many times where I've seen people where they won't spend money on something that will help them prevent an event. They have the event, like go to the emergency, and they spent that 10 times over. So think about that. You know, you're not buying something to have in your home and to have for your family because it's something that you don't need. It's, it's a necessity. I don't think any family should be without this because it is the number one most important thing. Water is not a drug. Water is needed in high amounts because of the laws of nature. Water helps everything else work better, everything in your body. And water needs to be the first line of help. You are the soldiers. You are the infantry. You are the first line of defense. You are the ones that must tell them. You must show them the way. You must teach them. I had to be taught. You had to be taught. How many of you knew this when you started? Somebody taught you, didn't they? Now you're being taught. Now you go tell and you share and tell them how to get water and tell them that water is not just water, no matter how pure it is, that they need three things in all the water that they drink. And if they don't have it, they don't have the best water. They need factor number one, strong antioxidants that fight free radicals. Number two, they must have microclustered hexagonal water that hydrates and carries antioxidants and nutrients deep into the cell. And number three, they must have water that has the increased ability to carry oxygen into the cells with high alkaline pH values. Now we're going to do a fun little demonstration for you here. And I have a volunteer who's going to come up and help me with this. And this is for you. I want you to be able to have a hands-on tool because people tend to show me. Show me that I'm dehydrated. Prove to me oh, I'm not dehydrated. I'm going to give you a little test that everybody in the room can use. And you're going to go home and play with it tonight and play with it with your friends. It's a, a test that comes from um, some of the acupressure uh, and kinesiology that we learned. This is Gina. And um, Gina has traveled all day, and so she's um, been pretty dehydrated, so I thought she would be a good one to, <laughs> to um, test because she didn't get to drink her good water. So first of all, we're going to just test her. And I'm going to take you this way. Okay, and you can see it on the screen. I'm going to test the tip of her nose. If we're going to test her in the clear, I'm pushing pretty hard, and I don't get any muscle or energy break. And now we test the dehydration point, and I have no trouble breaking that because she's very dehydrated. So now we're going to try and find something. She goes to the store, she runs into the 7-Eleven, and she comes out with smart water. And she takes this, open it up, and let's take a, a swig. And you can actually take a swig of it, hold it in your mouth so it goes to the energy to the brain. Good. And unfortunately, you'll have to swallow it. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> OK, now let's go back to our point. Did it hydrate? Not doing anything. The energy's not going anywhere. OK, swallow. You know what? I think I'll give you my glass so you can spit in it. I don't want you to have to drink all the soda. Well, the next ones, you won't want to drink these. <laughs> All right, let's do some bottled water. 
So have a swig of RO. You can drink that because that it won't kill you. Hold it in your mouth. Now, is this going to hydrate her? It's even weaker. All right, you can swallow that. Now, sometimes we think, oh, we're thirsty. Let's go for some juice. All right, so take a so you can swallow that too. Hold it in your mouth. Good old pasteurized juice. Did it hydrate that brain? Not even. Yeah, that's right. And Sprite. Okay, now, you can swallow that if you want. <laughs> you can spit it out too. Okay, give me a swig and you can put it on the table there. Okay, give me a strong, let's hear. <laughs> Nothing. You want to spit it out? Swallow. You swallowed it. <laughs> okay. Now, this is good microclustered hexagonal ionized water. And let's put it in the mouth and see what we get there. Hold it in there. And is it going to hydrate or not? What's your vote? I can't even budge it. <laughs> now, swallow. Thank you. You may have that. I have this. You may. <laughs> You're going to need 34 of them. <laughs> you see, you could do that with your friends now. And you can show them. We gave her water. We gave her smart water. And it didn't do anything for her brain. We gave her juice. And it didn't do anything for her brain. And so we need to have the ability to take and show people, so now I've given you a little trick to test for dehydration. You first test them in the clear, and then you hold the point on the nose, and then you can give them tap water, you can give them RO water, whatever's available, and then you want to hold the last, and you can have them put it in their mouth, because it'll go to the brain, and it will show you if it's hydrating the brain. And isn't that amazing? What could we do to our society if we could change the hydration of our brains, starting from our schools, from kindergarten up? Yes, let's, we could change our society, literally, if we would hydrate our brains. Take control of your health. Your body requires a constant and a consistent supply of water. It is the most important compound you put in your body. How many of you believe that? I know you believed it before tonight, but how many of you now are emphatic about it? And no function or reaction in the body can take place without the presence of water. Do you realize how critical that is? If there's a function in your body that is not working, what is that telling you? You don't have enough water because every function and every reaction in the body needs water. And that is our presentation for tonight. Dr. Allen has gone beyond her doctorate in nutrition to find answers for her clients' brain issues when nutrition isn't enough. She had vast training in neurodevelopmental therapy, neurokinesiology, brain reflexes, light and sound therapy, and brain stimulation techniques. Dr. Allen's personal challenge was to help her daughter, who was brain injured from asphyxiation, oxygen deprivation, and for her other child who had Asperger's. Both daughters today are functioning well emotionally, socially, and academically. She now offers other families the kind of life-changing information and care she so desperately needed for her own children. Dr. Allen's vast experience includes nutrition, allergy balancing, neuro-emotional release, essential oils, total body modification, homeopathy, magnetic and electromagnetic balancing, herbs, nutritional supplements, quantum energetic techniques for brain and body health, light and sound therapy, auditory integration training, neurokinesiology, and neurodevelopment brain re-education. She has developed a brain program called the Allen Method, which facilitates the connection of neurological pathways which are injured, damaged, missing, or not working properly. 
Through the Advanced Learning and Development Institute, individuals can participate in Dr. Allen's life-changing brain camps and home programs. Through this alternative brain developmental technology, many adults and children are finding hope and success with their brain, behavior, and health issues. For more information, contact Dr. Kareen Allen, Advanced Learning and Development Institute. The phone number is 866-81-BRAIN. Our website is www.brainadvance.org or send us an email, brainadvance at gmail.com.